Hey guys, welcome back to the bench today for the follow-up on the smoke fluid video that I did uh, nine days ago. The 20 drops of smoke fluid using JT Mega Steam. Now obviously you can see here I bought a bottle of uh, Lionel's Premium Smoke Fluid and we're going to take this engine apart again today for the third time and see what the wick looks like inside of it. It's got about an hour of run time on it since I put the uh, the Lionel rope wick. I actually put two of them in there and uh, we're gonna see what that looks like after an hour's worth of run time see if uh, how bad it charred having the wick completely saturated um, we'll look at the uh, pre-cut batting again then now that it's been sitting on the bench for a week see if, how much it dried out and we'll take a look at some tiki torch wick that I pulled out of one of my tiki torches so I'm just gonna repeat again I am not telling you to put 80 drops of smoke fluid in your engines I'm not telling you to take them apart I'm not telling you to void your warranty. This is just what I'm doing for my own curiosity. I just happen to be putting it on video so you can see what I'm doing as well because I want to get optimum performance out of these smoke units when I'm running it. Um, smell for me, everybody complains that this stuff stinks pretty bad. I don't have a sense of smell so uh, <laughs> it could smell like dog shit that's been baking in the backyard for a week and it wouldn't make a difference to me. Uh, I know a lot of you guys, your wives complain, they want something that smells better, whatever, but I just want to see for myself what the Lionel Premium Smoke Fluid actually does if there's a difference between the Mega Steam. I'm not saying one's better than the other. Lionel recommends their own product, obviously. The smoke units on here were designed using this. Um, the Mega Steam, they put out an email, I'm sure you read it. Uh, it's thin, it's not very thick, it does evaporate, this does evaporate, so evaporate, dry up, whatever you want to call it. We'll take a look at that in the wicks that I showed you earlier. So here's the three different style wicks. Uh, this is the pre-cut batting that I showed you last week, nine days ago. This was the pre-cut stuff that we took out of this thing. This was the burnt off stuff that I cut out. Now remember at the end of my video, I would put 20 drops of smoke fluid in this burnt out stuff it's dry it's been sitting here for nine days on the bench and it's dry you see a little bit of residue here on my cut pad but this portion with 20 drops is dry after nine days so that's going in the trash right now now this is the pre-cut chunk that was left you saw me add 80 drops to this you can see that it's starting to dry out it's been sitting here on my workbench and it's starting to dry out the edges are dry but you can also clearly see that the center of it because I completely saturated this thing with 80 drops it's still got fluid in it and if you squeeze it you can see there's still a fair amount of fluid inside this thing but that was nine days and it's already drying up and a lot of times my engines will set for a month six months even a year before I run them again so that's why it's very important to resaturate your your wick your batting before you're gonna run these engines again or else you're gonna burn up whatever wick is in there and then your smoke's going to be minimal. So I'm going to throw this away as well because I don't like it. I think the other stuff works better. So we're just going to chuck that in the trash now too. Obviously this is a uh, gigantic tiki torch wick. I pulled this out of one of my tiki torches in the backyard. It's twisted rope and I added 40 drops of smoke fluid to the end of this that was already burnt just to see what it would do. And um, it started to go down the wick you know spread down here like it's supposed to and the end is dry and just by the looks of this thing I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna experiment with this because I know that this stuff works it works great uh, the MTH stuff works great I use that on my engines too um, but this is Lionel stuff I bought it on the Lionel website I've been using it in all my rebuilds it works great so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this engine apart we're gonna look at the batting that's in there to see what it what has happened to it with one hour of run time we're gonna see um, how much it dried up after sitting for nine days and then we're gonna replace what's in there with these two brand new wicks and I'm gonna saturate it with the Lionel premium smoke fluid and I'm gonna run it and uh, see if there's any difference if it lasts any longer if 40 or 80 drops will last any longer so I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this thing apart Okay, so I got the boiler off this thing. It's pretty easy. Um, most of the steam engines are pretty easy. Alex M showed me how to get this one apart, and there's 
four screws that hold the boiler on here and here there's two that hold the cab on and then these two posts here is where the smoke unit flips in upside down to the boiler and the bracket there holds that in I got this paper towel sitting under there just to hold it straight so you can see it now this is the funnel basically where you dump the smoke fluid into this and it has to run down in to each side so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off there's five screws two here one in the center and then one on each side holds this funnel to the top plate there in the gasket so I'll go ahead and take that off and we'll peek inside see what that batting looks like so you know here you can see I think the video makes this look a little darker than it is but those two wicks that I put in there which have about an hour's worth of run time on it barely have any brown to it they're not bad at all um, this side here has a little bit more and the resistor was pushed down in there pretty deep and you can see the resistors on this side this side is for the uh, the steam whistle and that one is pretty black but that was black before and that's why I opened it up the first time that happened shortly after I bought this because I couldn't get any smoke out of it and like I said in the previous video I didn't have enough fluid in here so this resistor here got pretty black but it still works the wires not broken and uh, you can see here it's clean on this side and it's clean on the other side it just got pretty black right there and that's what happens if you don't saturate this wick enough if this is dry that resistor gets so hot that it just burns the crap out of the top of it making it harder for the fluid to flow through there and absorb and that's what makes all your smoke so the more that wick gets burnt the less smoke you're gonna have and that's why I wanted to open this up and see how much I really needed to saturate this thing now there's one on each side and that's dry it's bone dry it's been setting for nine days in this engine I ran it for an hour I probably put uh, I don't know 20 or 40 more drops in it after I primed it out here just to keep it wet but that one's completely dry and I'm pretty sure you can see down inside the bowl there in this chamber there's no residue there's no oiliness it's completely dry sitting for nine days so that's why you need to make sure you prime these things and saturate them again if you leave them set now there's a little bit of residue right here on the end of this one you can see it maybe there but not very much the rest of it is completely dry there's really no reason for me to replace these but I'm gonna put two new ones in them anyway just so we can do this experiment from scratch with two new Lionel wicks I'll stuff those down in there and we'll put it back together fill it full of fluid now you see here there's these little grooves in here and then when people say that you overfill this you'll get smoke fluid in your fan motor that's what they're talking about see how big this bowl is but if you put too much fluid in there which is I don't know how you're gonna do it unless you put a half a bottle of fluid in this thing but the fluids gonna run up to this point and spill over into the fan chamber and then your sh motor shaft is gonna get smoke fluid on it and your fans gonna get full of smoke fluid so it's gonna fling it all over the place make a mess and eventually make your fan motor squeak so you don't want to fill it up that much but I have yet to do that even though I thought I did if you take that spacer out you can really see how big this one is now not all of them are the same they are different sizes of course another reason why I like to open them up to see exactly how big they are but when you put your wick in here you just need to make sure you get it stuffed down to leave clearance for the air when the fan spins to push it in that chamber there you don't want to have your wick jammed in there blocking the air passage because that's where that's what pushes the smoke out now here's one of the Lionel rope wicks as Mike Reagan demonstrated in his smoke uh, unit upgrades you just pull this thing apart spread it out which I've done here I will do that to the other one and then I'll ball them up and stuff them down inside the smoke uh, the smoke unit bowl and we'll make sure the air passages are clear and then put the top cover back on now I've wadded these things up I've stuffed them down in there and I've already pre soaked them it's already got 40 drops in here you can use your finger and you can you can feel in there it's it's not very wet so I'm gonna add some more smoke to it there's 
30 on each side, so we got 60 drops in this thing now. And it's it's starting to get there. I can feel it when I push it in there. You can start to see it puddle up. Now you can see it really getting saturated. Make sure the passage, the airway passage is clear for the fan. And once again, I have 80 drops in here. And I could even put more, I'm not going to. Eh, what the hell. Okay, that's 100 drops to prime this brand new batting in there. And you can see it's pretty wet. It's not puddled up. It's not oozing out when I squeeze it, but that'll give me a good start. I'm not telling you to put 100 drops in your locomotive, but you can see what 100 drops just did. It's not overflowing into the fan area. That wick is a, has absorbed every bit of it. We should get some good smoke out of this thing now. Now just for kicks, I added another 20 drops. It's now got 120 drops with brand new smoke batting. And when you put this back together, make sure none of that batting is sticking out the side because, of course, you'll get a leak. There's a gasket between that top board and the bowl, the reservoir. So make sure you get all that batting tucked inside before you put this thing back together. And you can see 120 drops. There's no smoke fluid running out if I tip it upside down. There's none on the bottom. It's not oozing out the side. There's 120 drops in there, and it's all absorbed. And I saw some of you guys probably right now are just having a cow. Oh my god, he put 120 drops in there. Lionel only said 20. Well, you know what? It's my engine. If the thing burst into flames running down the tracks, it's my 1200 bucks. So, you know, my loss, not yours. One other thing I wanted to mention is uh, somebody in my last video mentioned that, well, how do you know what size drop? What are we talking about? Because different applicators are obviously different size of drops. The, uh, the Mega Steam eyedropper and the premium smoke fluid bottle, those are pretty close. I mean, unless you want to get down to the nitty gritty and measure milliliters or microns or whatever you want to measure, they're pretty close. Obviously, this is a 26 gauge needle applicator. The drops out of there are very tiny. Um, <laughs> a fraction of what these large drops are. I have this for uh, special applications that are tight to get into and some of the smaller engines that I have with small smoke fluid reservoir so obviously I mean if I was going to do a hundred drops of this compared to a hundred drops of that is not even half so I have the 16 gauge bottle I've mentioned this one before this is a very large tube I, I use this when I'm out here working by myself uh, rebuilding smoke units and I want to prime them and I'm not really counting drops I'll just use this to flood the reservoir and uh, do it until I can see the smoke fluid is saturated in there that's what I would normally use. I didn't use that for you guys so we could count the drops using the Mega Steam bottle and the premium uh, smoke fluid from Lionel. And then I have this smaller one that I got from JT Mega Steam. I think it's about a 20 or 22 gauge needle. It helps. It's got the little angle tip on it. Uh, the cab forward is helpful because of that smoke deflector on top. But of course, the different size needles are going to have a different size of drop. But I think we all know that when Lionel or MTH says, you know, put 15 to 20 drops in there, they're, you know, going to use this eye drop or this bottle, that's a drop. And if I drop these down here on the bench, you'll see that they're pretty, pretty close in, a, in the same size of drop. Just for kicks, we'll do a drop of Lionel smoke fluid. There's one drop. And we'll do the Mega Steam over there and watch them spread. Actually, the Lionel fluid, whether or not the drop is bigger or is the fluid is just thinner, see how much more that one spread than the Mega Steam. That one's a little thicker. This one's really thin. So drops are pretty much the same, but look look at the difference how they spread out more. Let's try it again just to see if it. Has a different effect. 
There's one drop. Left hand shaky. There's one drop. Same result. The Lionel drop spread a lot more than the Megasteam drop. I'll give you one little tip if you're going to try to take these engines apart or put them back together. If you don't have magnetized screwdrivers, it really does help because you do not want to lose these little screws when you're trying to drop them in a tight space. So if you don't have magnetized screwdrivers, buy you one of these, three or four bucks, Home Depot or Lowe's. You can magnetize it, you just rip your screwdriver in there. And if you want to demagnetize it, you just run it on the demagnetizer side. But just rub it in here, magnetize it, put your screw on the tip. That way you can drop it right down in there so it don't get lost. It also helps when you're pulling the screws out. Once they're loose of the threads, they'll stick to the tip and you can pull it right out. Well, it's all back together. It's got new replacement batting in it, Lionel Premium Smoke Fluid. It's got 120 drops of fluid in it. I just had it upside down to screw the boiler back on and none of the fluid ran out onto the foam cradle. There's no foam running down, or there's no oil running down the side of the boiler there. And you can't see from the video, but when I look down in the stacks, the uh, funnel is dry. So that 120 drops is in there. It's soaked into the batting. I'll take it inside and put it up on my overhead loop and see what it does. I'll try to get some video in there, but it's kind of dark, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, I'm going to say that uh, the volume of smoke is quite a bit more. See, after several minutes, that thing is just pouring smoke out of it now. I'm sorry for this crappy video, but... I mean, this has only been a couple minutes. The game room's already filling up with smoke. <laughs> 